Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitching Mommy, and it's Wednesday, March 16th, 2022, and I'm here to do some French knots with you. Um, I'm working on my Victoria Sampler Year in Stitches, the March block, and as you can see, there's some cute little French knots over here on this bush, and I had so much fun doing them, and I know it's kind of a stigma around the floss tube community that French knots are horrible and something to be afraid of, and replace them with beads at all costs. <laughs> and I just thought I would sh I would it'd be fun to do it on camera for people just in case you've never done it before or in case you could use some tips. Um, if you still don't like them, totally fine. But I thought, why don't I do a little video showing how I do French knots? So hopefully you can find something in this video to help you and yeah, hopefully that's good. So the thing with French knots that I think some people ha struggle with is that they may not be exactly the same size. So if you're doing something like eyes on a snowman or a person, um, I think people are afraid they're going to be wonky. You'll have one big, one little, and it won't look right. Something like flowers, it's easier to have them be a variety of sizes without it really mattering because it's something natural like that. Um, but if you kind of get consistent with it after, I mean, maybe a little bit of practice, then you can get a fairly consistent size. So I'm going to use this pink. It's my lighter pink that I chose for this uh, design called Secondhand Rose from Classic Colorworks. And there's some little buds on this tree, and they're kind of flying away as well. And then there's some down here that have landed on the ground. So it's I'll, I'll do all the pink stuff for you here. There's also some purple buds on this tree. Um, which depending on if I'm feeling like it, I'll, we can go do that too. <clears throat> so maybe we'll start with the ones on the bottom. So I'll start with the farthest one over here. And so I'll roll up to where it is. I usually like to put my finger where it's gonna be so I can know where to run my needle. We'll see how this will go with the camera in the way. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fun. Oh yeah, you know what? Something I do too. Let's let's start over. With French knots and with beads, if the only thing I'm doing is a French knot or a bead, I'll I'll I tend to anchor my starting thread. So I'll like start where I need to be to go one direction away from where I need to be. And then I'll come back and it gives the starting point a little more stability to keep your your bead or your um, French knot from coming out if it gets tugged on in the future. So with a French knot, you come up in the hole that it's shown on the pattern, come all the way up. <clears throat> And you wrap, I have a two-stranded um, French knot right here. That's what the pattern recommends. And you wrap it around the needle once. You go back down the hole, the same hole. And the trick for me is to hold this thread tight at the very base of the needle the entire time the needle is going through the fabric. So I'm holding that tight all the way until the needle goes through. And then I can let go and complete the French knot. And you pull loosely. You don't want to pull too tight because then the French knot can come out, you know, all the way back through the fabric. <clears throat> Let's go over to the next one. This one looks like it's in between there. It's not on a joint. The other thing you can do with, um, if you had a, a single strand, like for example, I had a single strand on my needle for this back stitching. If for some reason you had the same color French knot that you had for backstitching and you had a single strand on your needle and you didn't want to have a tiny back, a tiny French knot, you can wrap twice around your needle and go down and it will be roughly the same size as a two-stranded French knot. <clears throat> but since I have two strands on my needle, I'm going to go ahead and doing this through the camera. <laughs> so hopefully... This one's tricky because it's 
not in a regular joint. There we go. So yeah, again, hold the thread really tight against the base of your needle. Nah. And pull it through. There's another little one. So I think it's just super cute and fun. And once you get the hang of it, it's not that hard to do French knots, which is really a little easier than beads sometimes, depending on the project. And if you don't really need, like I don't really want any beads on this. Some things need beads, you know, you want some bling, but other things, flowers and stuff, you don't, you don't really need beads. So you put the needle in, pull the thread that's wrapped really tight, <clears throat> and then pull it through. And you'll get somewhat consistent results Sometimes the problem can come if you are in an area, which I will be up here pretty soon, where there, it's, it's on blank fabric and not on top of other stitches. And that's, it can be tricky sometimes to make sure that the, th the French knot doesn't just pop right back through the fabric, especially if it's a small one, like a single-stranded French knot. Let my thread dangle to untwist a little bit. It's really long. <clears throat> it's the full yard. I just pulled it off the bobbin. So let's see. So sometimes what I will do if I'm having trouble with my French knot, um, once I pull it through, if it's um, not staying on the top of the fabric like it should, because you are technically supposed to go back down the same hole. <clears throat> This thread is really long. I will sometimes go in like, if I come up here, I would go down in pier piercing the fabric right next to it, you know, which is going to be hard to do. Like just a, just a thread away, you know, so that it doesn't look like it's in the, a different spot because it's underneath the knot. But then it, it will be anchored by that fabric thread and it won't fall back through. <clears throat> Let's see, this one is in the middle again, so this adds just a nice touch of texture. And one more down here on the ground it looks like, then I'll probably run my needle up the trunk to do the other one, or the other ones in the tree. <clears throat> Usually if you have a two strand ha uh, French knot, it tends to be big enough that you won't, it won't fall, uh, pop through the fabric. So you make sure I have all of them down here, I think I do. So then the next one is up here on this branch, so I'll weave my needle and especially I didn't I didn't do it down here which I sometimes might but because I stitch in hand I would like to weave my threads underneath my stitches as much as possible just to help with tension because I don't want the carried thread to pucker my pucker my fabric on the front and yeah so I think maybe obviously holding your needle tight holding the thread on the needle tight when you're wrapping or is is probably the key tip I would have but the other one is not to pull too tight when you've gotten back to the when you've gotten back to your fabric so here I am going back down the same hole pull the thread tight there's my little flower so cute see these are all like weirdly spaced branches and flowers make sure you pull it down before you start pulling the needle through all the rest of the way let's roll it up a little more and get better access up here
And think about it too with your tension when you come back up for your next French knot, not to pull too tight because you could come up for your next French knot and um, pull your last one out. <laughs> Yep, there you go. And let's see. Right, right here. I have my pattern off to the side. Oops. Again, trying to do this <laughs> through the camera lens is a uh, different. Move this out of the way. Next. Let's go around the branch. It's this one. Let's see, that's that one, then it's here, then it's here. So funny. Victoria Sampler likes to do their back stitching, like these are all like not necessarily with the, with the normal grid. Uh, they have a lot that are in the middle, which is why you generally will want an even weave if you're doing a Victoria, Victoria Sampler pattern, because they do a lot of that. Your specialty stitches, but also back stitching and things you're going to need the quote unquote center of the stitch center of the blocks you'll use that quite a bit for these french knots the back stitching sometimes you have little fractional stitches too um, as well for their details i love their patterns though they they're de they make oops this one might not work because i have my tail there it's too long there's let's see Okay. I'm going to have to redo this one. I thought I just took my tail out longer, so that shouldn't happen, but it seemed to have anyways. So now I've got a knot, because <laughs> I am making a knot on purpose. Yeah, my tail got caught up in that. So let's see if I can take this out. Without too much trouble. There we go. There we go. My needle, my tail should not be that long. All right, let's keep going. Got my roll in the way back there. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and there's some scattered French knots up here, so I'm going to go do those and then come back to the tree. I think that'd be the most direct route. There's one right here, just down from the bird. And then these French knots are the last thing in this little march block, so that's exciting. These pink ones and then the little purple ones on the other tree. And just head over here. There's one on the house that went all the way over there. <laughs> the wind must be blowing. This reminds me, though, of 
um, this morning, I noticed our, we have a tree in our backyard that has white petals in the spring and it's starting to shed the petals and um, that X is being weird. I want to be in the middle. There we go. Um, and when it's, when it uh, sheds its white petals, it looks like snow, which is fun, but it reminded me of this tree that's shedding its petals like down here and blowing away in the wind. When the wind comes up, it sometimes looks like it's actually snowing when those petals are flying around. It's pretty fun. And All right, back to the tree. There's one more in the sky here. Let's see, three and a half from here. Looking good. If you just, if French knot, knots are called for in a design, a bonus is that you have the exact color already if you have that color thread and you don't need to try to source beads that match because <laughs> you got what you need already. All right, back to the tree. I, there's one here. And then there's another one down here on this branch, but I'll kind of zigzag through the middle here, I think. <clears throat> I had questions last time about my the path I take when I stitch, and I tend to like to be, let's get a low grip on that, I tend to like to be frugal with my thread usage, so I'll kind of mentally plot a path on the fabric that will be hopefully the most efficient you know path it's not necessarily doesn't always work out that way but like if like how I um like how I came over and did these while I was here rather than doing the whole tree starting and stopping to do that one you know I, it just doesn't make as much sense to me let's see go up three I think that one's right there joint it looks like. <clears throat> mm, which way should we go after that? Because there's another one down below. We'll do that one first. And then go up and around the tree to finish out. That is a problem sometimes with knots because you're purposefully twisting your thread. So it will sometimes get more twisted than if you were just stitching.
So I hope this example will help somebody. Let me decide to give French knots a try or inspire you to a little bit more confidence in them. I'm probably not perfect with it, but I have found it's, you know, it works good enough for <laughs> for me. And I have fun with it. I tend to like specialty stitches though, so gives it some texture. A little bigger than because I let go I let go too soon since it's a flower I'm not gonna worry about it <clears throat> that's probably the biggest uh, ch -ch -ch. I think it's about here here one two three huh oh well it's around here somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, that's probably the biggest tip I can give you is just to make sure you're holding on to this thread all the way till your needle goes all the way through the fabric. Because this one got big and wonky when I let go just a smidge too early. <clears throat> This is the last one. There we go. I think that's all of them. And I'm going to go ahead and do my double back and forth anchor here. to give it some stability so if the end French knot gets bonked it won't rip out. Same with beads. I do that with beads too. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these with you. There's not as many on the other side. decided to do, I have two pinks and two purples that I chose for this design. It's a choose your own colors kind of situation. <clears throat> and I decided since it was spring that I would choose the lighter of the two for these flowers because that seemed to make the most sense to me. And quite a few on the tree, but the tree is smaller. So I'll take this out. Since it's not directly on my lap, the it's glaring a little bit, I'm keeping it in the package. So, okay. So this is Special Orchid by Victorian Motto. That's the one I'm using for my light purple. And yeah, the thing with French knots, it can be nice and convenient is you can do it with the thread that's already on your needle. So I had a two-stranded uh, yellow on my needle. I was, you know, did this window, did this window, did this window, and then just popped down here and did all of these French knots. And then I came down here and did these yellow. <laughs> just with one continuous thread, you can even see that where I was like, actually, I think, how did, I think I went from here, over here, to here, down here, and then down here. So I just kept going. <clears throat> Makes it nice and easy. So nice pop of color. Very fun. All right, so let's do these purple ones. I will anchor in the bush, I think. Hopefully I have enough of this one. There's a lot of a lot more French knots than I expected. This is not a full string, it's a shorter string. So we'll see. You do need a little bit more. You can't play thread chicken quite as much with French knots as you can with cross stitch because you need that, um, this, this like room to do this.
I pull it close to the camera, then I can just watch what I'm doing in the camera, and it works great. <clears throat> Okay, let's, there's one kind of in the middle of the tree. I'll do that one first, and then I'll move around. The rest of them are more, oh, there's one over there. Maybe I'll do that one at the end. Most of them are around, are around the edge, but there's another one like right here. So I think I'll do this one, then go around the edge, and then finish with that one. That's my plan. sure that's tight before I pull through. away from this. So wrap, poke, pull tight. Pull. French nut. Can't let it fall off the tip before you get it in the fabric. And let my thread dangle again. Let my Oh, when I was letting my thread dangle, example, it pulled through. So I must have been pulling on that a little bit too much. Sometimes you can pull it back through and it won't look too bad to just do it again. But then you gotta be real careful doing the, let's see, where's the next one? Doing the next one and not pulling too tight because that hole has already been opened a little bit more than the other ones, so. But if you're worried about it, you can always do what I did when I got that knot in the fabric and just take the knot out and start over with that knot. So, opportunity to show you one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably easier if you're on a frame with uh, not having to hold the roll in your hand for this. Oh, how funny. That's wrong. Oh, maybe not. Because that's way too close. I think this one's in the wrong spot for some reason. Okay. Man. Pulled them both out. <laughs> All right, so now I got some fun knots to deal with. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. I think my 
let's see. Where did I get off? So this is this one. I don't know. Maybe, oh, I did that one up here. It should have been down here. That was where I did went wrong. Okay. So I've got two stupid knots here now. But let's see. I don't know if it's worth trying to take them out. Okay, when I was starting this other one, it occurred to me this is a this is a cheater method, so I, I won't have to I felt a tug because there's that first knot. So I think when I I'll just stop it there and then kind of stitch over that in upcoming things and just start my new French knot right here with the fresh thread. So I think I had this this one in the wrong spot, which messed me up. Okay, and then this one, is where it should have been. And now I'm going to come back here and kind of catch this take it with me and this one is up here which now is the correct distance <laughs> from that <clears throat> and now on the back it's like tacked down a little bit <clears throat> not looped not not a loose loop all right let's get this roll under control again Okay. Maybe I'll go down. Go in the right right hole. No, I think it was in the wrong hole. <clears throat> then back up. Get my tail out of the way. Learned my lesson from last time. Pay attention to that. I think I should have enough thread here, which is nice. This one's right on the tip here. I think I did that again. It is tricky. Making sure I can see it in the when I'm looking at it through the camera. <laughs> Let my thread untwist again. And just a few more.
see, one, two, it's a full, full four down, then a half over. <coughs> Here's that first one. That I thought about getting last time, but figured I'd wait till now. Then I can anchor down in the bush again, but I might I might just anchor in the tree. We'll see. Alright. Is that everything? <clears throat> it's an awful lot of them. <laughs> I think that's all. Alrighty, that's all she wrote for March. Super fun, gives it a nice spring feel. I love that, the French knots make it. So anyways, I hope that was helpful and that you picked up a few tips and maybe it's not quite as scary as it used to be. Maybe I made a convert or two <laughs> that uh, just to try French knots once in a while. And I hope it goes well for you. And um, yeah, see you at my next update video. Happy stitching. Bye.